perfect, perfect. Ah, yes, yes, it's that time once again. Shout out to all the fresh ingredients. And if you're not, if you're new to this, and not true to this, welcome to Soft Sports. If you're not familiar with Soft Sports, Soft Sports is a Houston, Texas homer network. It means we're talking all sports, but only Houston. Uh, but you know, a uh, big event is taking place in here. We know, we know football is king when we're talking sports in the city. And a big transition is just taking place. And so we're going to get into that tonight. Uh, but before we get into that, Let's see what gentlemen we got getting down with the round tonight. Who do we have in the mix spilling some sauce with us this evening, man? Man, you got your boy Third Coast Sports TV, Wink in the building. Man, it's always a pleasure doing the show with my round table brethren. Let's go ahead and get y'all another good show. Uh, really, uh, really. Who else we got in the mix? It really don't matter who in the mix right now, but it's your boy Wise. <laughs> Uh, but you know I got a plug for 30 seconds. Make sure you uh, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. Make sure you comment in and keep you know with the conversation. Uh, make sure you join the Patreon so you can get in the Discord conversation. We got the combine coming up in two weeks. Uh, you don't want to miss that. And then we got draft picks for the first time in a couple of years. So uh, Houston Texans is a very exciting time. Thank you for joining the stream today. Yes, 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 yes. And last but not least, who we got in the mix with us this evening? What's up, Sauce Nation? You already know who it is. Read the shirt. You already know who it is, man. It's your boy, Spitz. What's up, 526? Hey, remember, this is the original Houston Roundtable. The original Houston Roundtable. Often imitated, never duplicated. We about to give you all a good show. What's up? Already, uh, already. Uh, for those of you, who, for, for those of you who do know and don't know, man, yes, this is a partnership with Fox Twenty Six. So you can go follow, get the Fox Twenty Six app. So if you, you know, if you, if you, if you're too backing up, you can always watch us there Tuesdays at seven o'clock. So shout out to all the good folks at Fox, man. Shout out to Sauce Nation, all the fresh ingredients in the chat. You know, we do a little thing around here called the Sauce Nation uh, roll call. Now we may not have enough time to shout out to everybody, but you know, shout out to side with pride wherever you are in the Greater Houston area. Let me know where you're at. If you're not in the Greater Houston area, you need to make better life decisions um but wherever you may be we'll send a little bit of love but while we do that or while y'all drop that in the chat let's get to it man uh, we're in a similar situation that we were into last year right a very similar situation and i won't say the circumstance the outcome was similar but it was very close so what i'm saying is that we had a head coaching dilemma last year after the uh Dismissal of one Billy O. Then we go and we pick up a guy named David Cully, who I don't think too many people even really knew existed. I mean, I don't think he the people that he worked for even knew that he was employed by them. He was out there stealing money. But um, somehow, some way, this guy became the head coach of the Houston Texans. Now, I think many of us, 
I would say all of us in the round at least said, okay, this guy has a short future here, but what is this saying? What is this hire telling you? You know, uh, but he lasted maybe a little bit less than a lot of us thought, which is a year. I think some of us thought maybe two years, and they would be bringing in uh, McCown. There were rumors of this guy last year. Anyway, fast forward, he gets fired, another coaching search. A lot of names thrown about from the Gannons to the uh, McDaniels or the McDaniel to the um, O'Connells to the uh, Floreses to the – I mean, just lots of names being thrown in the mix, right? And similar to last year, at the, uh, the 11th hour, like Smith said the other day, I said 11.59 – uh, <laughs> somebody shows up. They put the bat signal on or something, and out of nowhere, like y'all, y'all remember, y'all remember uh, Street Fighter Two, when somebody come put the quarter in next to you, you fighting the computer. Somebody put pop the quarter in next to you. New challengers appear. That's what happens out of nowhere. A new challenger appears in the coaching conversation, and this new challenger has been on your roster the entire time. It's been on your staff the entire time that you have been doing this coaching search, and nobody's heard Hot a thing. Show. Yo. You know, half the audience don't know nothing about no game rooms, no uh, arcades, and none of that. So you just lost a whole <laughs> bunch of people with that reference. You know that. You know, kids don't know nothing about that. Yeah, you, you ain't lying. They don't even know about. They don't even know about physical money these days. They go, How did you play arcade games? They you, don't know you put the credit card in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Does the arcade machine? They, they is that don't know nothing about AMC. They don't know nothing about AMC 16 in that corner with Mortal Kombat 3 and Tekken 2 and Time Crisis. They don't know nothing about Marvel versus Capcom 2. They don't know what it was like, bro. Exactly. Hey, okay, okay, okay. Black Age Element, though, yeah, you got to put your quarter up there when you got next. You know, put your quarters up there, let them know what's going down. Yeah, that boy, y'all don't know nothing about that. Y'all don't know nothing about that, man. Uh, (laughs) And shout out to Quarantine Carpenter Bills, man. says, uh, if Mike McDaniel is black, uh, so am I. Man, look, that Mike McDaniel is about the same level of black as Logic and some other characters. But that's, that's going to take this to a whole different conversation. We just, we're going to try. I'm not going to take, I'm not going to venture down that, that road less traveled tonight. Y'all know how I can go that way easily. We're we going to try to stay on top. But shout out to everybody in the uh, chats, man. Um, but yeah, so out of nowhere, the talks of Lovey Smith arise. And then, you know, less than 24 hours later, you Lovey Smith is your new Houston Texans head coach. Um, now let's kind of let's let's kind of take a timeline on this thing. Before the Lovey thing, there's a lot going on with Brian Flores. There's a lot in that conversation. Uh, we briefly talked about you know him filing suit, and he informed the Texans beforehand because apparently he was a finalist. Uh, <clears throat> he informed the Texans about the suit, filed suit against the NFL. Uh, I think what is it, Denver? Um, what was it Denver? It was the Dolphins, and I forgot who the other team was. Uh, Giants, yeah. And so, anyway, Lovey gets the job. A little letter comes out from Flores and his lawyers. I don't know if you guys read it, but to, to give you the gist of it, basically saying congratulations to Lovey Smith. You know, that's that's the goal. We want to, you know, see more black head coaches in the NFL. But, you know, I was really a finalist for that job, and had I not have sued, you know, Basically saying that in so many words, that job would have been his had he not a suit. Okay. So ultimately, in my way, I took it like this. If the goal for you is to see more black head coaches, what is the purpose of the backhanded compliment? Because you really could have left all out. Hey, if you had a congratulations for the man, congratulations. We're striving. We're getting close to the goal that we're trying to achieve. But that made me look at Flores. I mean, I already looked at Flores a certain way compared to a lot of other fans. And I think we all did because of, you know, what we do know. Um, but that made me look at it even more so that really told me about his character because you could have kept your legal team from putting that out. You could have not even had any input in that statement. So I kind of want to talk about the Flores thing and then, we want, then I want to dive into the, um, the Lovey Smith situation and what that's going to bring forward for the uh, future of the Texans. But let's start off with, with, with Flores and kind of him being ousted. Uh, do you think he will ever have a job in the NFL again? And how do you feel about kind of his statement making that towards Lovey? Well, we'll start Wink with your thoughts on that. Well, I mean, he has all the right to be able to do exactly what it is he's doing because he wants the NFL to implement change. I get the reason why he wants to do it. Um, He's right for going out of his way to do it. The only thing is, right now, he's in a situation where he's trying to be hired as an NFL coach. Now, what he should have did 
will secure the coaching position first. Mm -hmm. Then, or at least behind the scenes, allow the team that whoever would have brought him on to know this is exactly what he's going to be doing in the next couple of months. But make no, but make no, 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 no bones about it that we're still going to do everything we can to be not not to be a distraction, but win football games. Few ways he could go about it. He went about it his way. That's fine. He can't be mad at any of the consequences if anybody chooses not to go the Brian Flores direction. Though, you make your bed, you lie in it for all the reasons why he's trying to go out of his way to do what he's doing to open the door. It's fine. Back home, back hand compliments. It's almost the equivalent of a left shake. A left handshake. If you know what that is, if you come up a certain way, you know that's not the most respectful thing that anyone can do. Um, you know, it's not, it's not, it's not quite there, but it's almost there. Um, you know, it, it, it's one of these things right now where we live in a politically correct climate, and while the Texans may have made this reason for, you know, a multitude of reasons, what we can say him being hired because he was the most qualified candidate regardless of who was on the actual market which happens to be lovey smith was the right hire so i have no issues with it okay okay wise man now i know flores was your guy you've been championing this guy for years you've been wanting this guy to be a houston texans head right. coach you know i know wise man has been the number one rooter on the flores train since day one man i know i know i know that's your guy I know that's your dude, but uh, <laughs> I'll be us to the you side. Be, <laughs> but it's a and you love it at 7 o'clock. Because if this was a toss, if this was a toss on our regular channels, I'll be doing some explicit content and I'll look explicit language right now. Mm, mm. But anyways, uh, Brian Flores, he's a seller. I don't know anybody has to stay. This guy's a fraud. They need an interview to play the Miami Dolphins. They need an interview to coaches for the Miami Dolphins because this guy's a Bill O'Brien Jr. This guy likes to demoralize his players. This guy likes to demoralize his coaches. Staff. Oh, but it's a problem when he gets fired. Mm, that's really interesting to me because he got fired by a black general manager. That gave him an opportunity to be a head coach for the Miami Dolphins franchise. How many black head coaches have there ever been for the uh, Miami Dolphins? I think he was the only one. So that's real interesting to me that a guy gets an opportunity like that. And yeah, I'm then wanting to entertain. I understand that they was going to give him $100,000 this, $100,000 that. But at the end of the day, you got to do your job. Um, if they would have followed through with the only man they had, Joey B, they would have had a better offense if they would have been in school. So... At the end of the day, when it comes to Brian Flores, especially because he wants to be a diva, he wants to go on Good Morning America, he wants to go on CBS, he wants to go on all the networks, get up, uh, he wants to get on first take. He wants to cry like a little female. He wants to act like he's going through uh, the Sean Watson case or something like that. He's a, he's a witness or something like that. Like, this dude cannot be serious with me right now. He's a fraud. He should not win this case. You know what's going to happen? This is what it reminds me of the cabinet situation. This is all that's going to happen. They're going to set up the details behind those doors. They're going to sign a paperwork. He's going to sign an NDA. He's going to be paid multiple millions of dollars. And guess what? The problem doesn't get settled. So why does it matter? <laughs> and he's a sellout. Once again, because he's the money to run with it. Well, if he would have just set up this posting year and would have get the next season to come back and uh, be a candidate for a coach, he probably wouldn't hide it. For the last three seasons, three seasons has been loose tie coaching uh, positions open every season. So that been, I mean, every all season. So come on, okay. Brian Flores, you trashed. You need to be put in a West Women's Department and um, just our best. <laughs> That's how I feel. <laughs> it was, it was, and, and the playoffs, and the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> shout out shout out to Voodoo uh, and Trill, man, for the super saucy super chat love. Uh, and, and Rio with the member message saying Robo Wise uh, says, uh, Voodoo says, hire more black coaches. Wait, not that one. Oh, we're going to talk about that because a lot of people, and if you guys are in the Texan social media arenas, the areas, boy, a lot of people flip the script 
when the conversation was Flores oh. to when the conversation turned to love you. So we're going to get to that. Oh, trust me, we'll definitely talk about that. And uh, shout out to Professor Trill says, shout out to the entire roundtable, the original Texans roundtable to all the Sauce Nation, all the new viewers catchers on Fox 26. Sauce up, boss up, it don't matter, it's hot butter garbage, and it's a wraparoni with trees. Shout out to Professor Trill, appreciate the love, man, wherever you may be in the uh, country today. Make sure you're taking care of yourself. Um, <clears throat> so, Spitz. Brian Flores was a finalist, was a candidate, decided to go another <clears throat> route instead of hearing out all the options he had available and he had two more jobs <clears throat> on the table, uh, decided to sue. Mm -hmm. How do you how do you think that impacted him? Mm -hmm. How do you feel about his statements with Lovey? Okay. First of all, uh, I do think if it wasn't for the of him suing, we probably be talking about Josh McCown being the head coach of Houston Texans. I do think the Texans kind of did – got backed into a corner, especially when you see that Roger Goodell sent out a press release, to, I think, to all the teams or the teams would say, like, saying this is unacceptable and things like that. Mm -hmm. So I do think the Texans were kind of guided into a direction. That's kind of why we ended up with Lovey. But this is the thing right here. You know, I don't know what I mean, you talked about this plenty of time in Discord, like like why I say y'all make sure y'all get part of this Discord because it's great conversation all the time. Now, some of my people might be mad at me, but if y'all know me like y'all supposed to know me, Y'all already know. I don't give a fuck. This right here. This right here is supposed to be the most the most crab in the bucket type stuff all the time. This is the most crab in the bucket. This is the most crab in the bucket type situation that we got here with Brian Flores. This whole, oh, I would have had the job if I wouldn't have sued. Dungeon is crap. Yeah, like, like, that, 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 that's crap in the bucket. Yeah. That's, 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 that's a crab in the bucket. That, that's what we do all the time. We can never sip and support our own. All we want to do is cr do crabs in the bucket. All we want to do is pull somebody down. Anytime we try to get ahead, whether it's because the black owned businesses, is it's getting your own clothing line, wherever we try to do something, it's always somebody back there pointing the shadows. You know they did this, right? They wouldn't have did it if it wasn't for me. It was, uh, it's always that type of situation. This is the most crab in the bucket type situation that we have. Oh, he wouldn't have got the job if I wouldn't have sued. Like, come on, man. Like, you, you want to change? Allow change to happen. It's, Crap. This shows me right here what I've always said about our people that we always won't change until change actually happens, and then we can, we just want something to complain about. Yeah. We just want to complain about something right now. now. That's all we really want to do. We just want to complain. They're not doing this, this and then as soon as stuff starts going on, well, they're only doing it because of this. They're only doing it. Allow the change to start to happen first. Don't point your fingers. Oh, this change. Oh, come on, man. Like, like, be for real. Like. Yes, I think that Brian Flores shouldn't have gotten fired from Miami. You want me to be honest? I mean, he he won with the last eight games, uh, one eight out of seven games type of situation. So he was on a good win streak. I know there were some other things behind the scenes, and the reason why he got relieved of his coaching duties. And the whole thing, if the whole thing with the uh, with the Bills is true, with Bill with Bill Belichick Texas, that is a massive situation. And do I believe that it's a whole good old boy league that these owners do how? White coaches before they hire minority coaches, absolutely. I'd be a fool to think otherwise. So I do think that type of stuff going on. I'm not disputing none of that. My thing is this: don't send out a letter like you said. He has control over his over his team. Send that letter, yay or nay. There's no reason for you to send that letter out saying that about about Love Smith. When Love Smith got the job, you said I wanted the job in Houston. I was a candidate. I'm glad to see another black man got the job. And that's all you had. That's all had to be said. You didn't do nothing else. You didn't have to do nothing else. But the whole, oh, he wouldn't have got the job if I wouldn't sue because I would have got the job if I wouldn't have been suing, that was unnecessary, bro. Mm -hmm. Completely unnecessary. And to be honest, they, that's, like I say, crab in the bucket mentality. And I lost respect for you in that in that, in that that sense, to be honest. Because you say you want, that you're doing this for up. You're doing this to get to get the word out, to get more minority head, my minority head coaches out there. Now they got some out there. Oh, it's not me. It's, it's everybody but me. Come on, man. Yeah, that's, that's what it is. Come on. Come on. We are the crabs. Your pubes will grab. <laughs> but, you know, and, and I'm kind of with you on that. And just like we was pointing out in the chat, man, because when this whole thing first started, right, you know, and we, we talked about pushing the issue about, you know, the black jobs and then and, and black employment and fairness in the league. But then, like you said, he went out and got two white lawyers. 
why not? You don't have two black lawyers. I mean, this list. If we're gonna play this game, let's play it all the way through, right? And like I said, there's a few other things. Like I say, just I find right. sketchy with Flores that uh, I find questionable. But there's, there's plenty of black lawyers. I know a lot of them. There's yeah. plenty of black lawyers out there. Yeah. I know a lot of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna hide the services of Esquire. Um, so again, you know, yes, like, it, it, Esquire. It's, it's just like it's a situation, man, where it's unfortunate. But me personally. It worked out, I feel like, in our favor because I did not want Brian Flores anyway. A lot of people did. Uh, a lot of people, whatever, you, you let the, the numbers fool them. And we talk about stats all, it's all the time, but we talk about stat sexuals, people getting really aroused over stats and numbers and not really looking at the story behind it. I think football is more of a story-based game than a stat-based. Yeah, stats are important. They, they tell you a little bit. There's too many factors, though, in my opinion, when it comes to football. But, like I said, we lucked out, we won. But I want to touch on something you said, Spitz, when you said that you felt like uh, before the memo, Josh McCown would have been the guy. Do you feel like there would have been a different reaction? Because I feel like the overall response to Lovey uh, now is positive. But, you know, like I said, there's some people who said some things. We'll get to that. Um, but do you think, what do you, what do you feel like the reaction would have been had they went that route, had they hired Josh McCown? From from who? From, from Texas. like national? Or from the Houston media? From oh. fans? From what? Uh, from from let's let's say from the Houston fan base and the national media. I mean, how do you how do you see the the response or or you know how are they paint the Texans if they hire Josh McCown? I, 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 I think the, I think the I think the national media would laugh at the Texans and say they was a joke out right? there out there hiring a guy who's never coached any type of football and just giving him the giving him the whole just giving him the keys to the franchise, letting him be a head coach after sitting out a year and he up his the claim oh he wants to watch his sons play high school football. Last time I checked, Pep Hamilton, who's who's on the coach staff for the Texans right now, son, if I'm not mistaken, is either the second. Rated quarterback in the state of Texas, or the second rated quarterback in the nation, one of the two. Yeah. So he's either either, either he's he, he's but obviously he's a top he's a top recruited guy quarterback that's, that's that's going into college pretty soon. He will have a reason to, for uh to to step away to watch his son play because his son's being highly recruited. Yeah. Which McCall's sons ain't being highly recruited. Yeah. So the whole his, his excuse for him not playing or him not coaching, being an offensive coordinator, that's why he took the year off to watch his sons play. It's bull. He just didn't want to coach. He he doesn't want to take out the time. He wants everything to be handed to him. This is privilege at his best. He wants everything to be handed to him. Oh, I was a quarterback for twenty years. Let me be. Let me be the head coach. I don't see New Orleans out there calling Drew Brees saying, "Hey, Drew Brees, come be our head coach." I don't see Dallas out there calling Romo, "Hey, let, hey, Romo, come be our head coach." Indianapolis ain't calling Peyton Manning. Denver didn't call Peyton Manning. And at least these guys won playoff games. These were uh, uh, these these guys uh, uh, and Drew Brees and Peyton. These are Hall of Fame quarterbacks. McCown's a backup, and, and he so he has no he has nothing to walk on to be up here to be a, to get a head coaching job. So the national media would have laughed, said the Texans go on Texans. They 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 would laugh at all of us, the joke of a franchise, all this type of stuff. And the Texan fans, I think you had some people out there hyped about the whole Calma tree because you know they like everything the Houston Texans phone feed them if they tell them somebody's good. Oh, he's good. The Texans said they're good. Cal says he's good, but he I guess he's good. Do you gonna have fans like us? Will be absolutely upset with it. Like, come on, man, y'all here making a mockery of the head coaching position. So it'll be probably a 50 50 split. Okay. But from a national media standpoint, just like they've been doing for the last couple of years, just making fun of the Houston Texans. Yeah, they make, us, yeah, they make us a very easy punching bag when it comes to a lot of national media. You really so take three minutes talking about Josh McCowns. It really do not matter. He's a sorry <laughs> bastard in the conversations. You two pass the wise. Bye. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Wait, we winked and uh, disappeared on us, so we'll come back to that. But let's uh, let, let's get into the to the to the lovey thing, right? And like I said, there was a lot of script flipping. A lot of people who originally, you know, were all pro Flores. Uh, people literally said, "Hey, well, the, the, they need to do the right thing." And I'm like, "Well, what is the right thing? Like, do they owe Flores something?" And uh, shout out to Mitch's Corner of Mayhem. Appreciate the super sauce, super chat love. And shout out to Broderick. I don't make ribs anymore, Brooks. <laughs> Appreciate the super saucy, super chat love. Uh, but like I said, you know, it, it's a situation. A lot of people, yeah, they need to hire a black quarterback, uh, I mean, a black uh, head coach, even though the Texans have had two 
black head coaches recently. Texas probably had more black head coaches now with the hiring of Lovey than it probably is, is either equal to or more than any other organization in football. I don't know it. I haven't looked it up. I have. I'm. This is a pure speculation. But I would. The Texans. The Texans. The Texans have the most black head coaches in, in NFL history. They went, they've had three in the in a in the span of a calendar year. We went from an interim head coach in uh in, uh Iraq. We hired David Cully last year. Now we got Lovey Smith. Yes. 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 Yeah, yes, yeah, yes. Black Lives Matter. Yes. 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 <laughs> but yes, yes, the race says. So <laughs> but, <laughs> but like I said, I, I, I want to get to that because there's a narrative being paid on the Texans. There's a narrative that's been paid on the Texans since Bob McNair was alive. Right, and that we can go all the way back to the inmates running the prison statement. Everybody knows that that was one of the things that came out of Houston that made national news. But like I said, you had a lot of people pro Flores. They need to do the right thing. They need to hire more black head coaches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Voodoo said earlier with the super chat. Uh, yeah, hire a black head coach. No, not that one. Why do you think people felt differently? We saw a wiseness. Why do you think people felt differently? about Flores compared to a, a proven coach who's had, you know, a Super Bowl appearance, who's played in a tough division and was actually successful versus a guy who did all right towards the last couple of years or the last year of his uh coaching career. Why do you why do you think the energy's so different, wise? Why is the energy different? I don't care. It don't matter. Um I don't care what people have to feel. They don't know what they thinking, Nikki Casarios made the right decision. That's all that matters. Uh, and Cal McNair should win the Black History uh, a Month Award because he has this most of the Black community. Stop it! Uh, this month. Stop right. that! For the last, for the first Stop week, it! For the Stop! First week, uh, black History Month. Stop Cal it! McNair has Stop it! Stop it! What? For Stop! Black people. Then some of these Black activists. Let's be Why? real. Stop! Let's be real. Why? Stop! 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 I'm begging you to stop! Stop! No. You just call waste management on yourself. Stop! (laughs) Oh man! Terrible! Terrible! Nah. You got Cal out here employing the whole black community, man. Uh, you get job. Can I finish making my point? Can I finish making my point? <laughs> go, 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 go ahead, bro. Go ahead. Uh, no, because for real, I, y'all don't understand where I'm coming from. You see in the national media, people like Jamel Hill, personally, she always want to call out the Texans specifically, talking about, oh, they ain't giving uh, black coaches no opportunities. It's other media, it's other media's of the Houston media talking about, oh, it wasn't going to be a black coach, it wasn't going to be a black coach, this, this and that. They didn't believe in Nikki Casario. They didn't believe in our owner, Cal McNair. They made the right decision at the end of the day. They went and got a guy. This is what I was asking for all, all season. Go get a guy with experience, a guy that's going to be able to turn around the culture, somebody that's going to be able to lead uh, these men, and somebody that's going to be able to relate to these players and uh, gain the respect of the locker room. That's exactly what you're going to get from Lovey Smith. And I think it was a great hire from Lovey, um, from Nicky Casarios. And I don't see why we got the haters. I mean, it's, it's Houston versus everybody. It's been like that for the Astros. It's been like that for the Rockets. It's going to be like that for the Texans. But at the end of the day, they're going to have to put out the results. Uh, if Lovey Smith can get us back to the Super Bowl, you know, the third time is the charm. He did it. He coached with the Bears. He went to the Super Bowl once. He didn't achieve it. He went to the Buccaneers, didn't do too hot. This is the third opportunity, so uh, we don't know what he can do with this Houston Texans roster, but I am excited to see what he's going to do with that number three pick, how he's going to be able to build this defense because he's have had a great career with bad quarterbacks like Res Grossman's, like Kyle Orton's, like let's not forget. He had phenomenal defenses and sorry offenses and still has success in the NFL. So um, I don't know where all this hate is coming from. Just because a guy is younger, that doesn't matter uh, all of this, all the time necessarily. And, and plus, this is how I feel about the whole situation. If you're going to bring in a guy like uh, Josh McCown or somebody like that, if you're not 100% on that guy, don't rush into hiring that guy. 
Because when you want a franchise, a true head coach, and you're looking long term, you want to have somebody in there for five to six years at least uh, to build that culture, to build that roster, and build that team. Now, I don't see, how, I don't know what they're doing with Lovey. Maybe Lovey is that stopgap. Maybe he's that transition within the next three years to a more prominent guy that they're gonna that they're seeking. But for right now, he might be the answer. And I think it's phenomenal that they hire within the company because a lot of a lot of companies out here and a lot of uh, situations don't do that. So uh, I want to give a big ups and I want to give an apology to Nikki Casario for real because last week I bashed him and this week he did a good job. So hell of a job, Nikki Casario. <clears throat> uh, Spitz. Everybody was talking Flores. Everybody was talking about black quarterbacks. I mean, black QBs. I mean, God. black head coaches, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm getting stuck into a conversation we had the other day. Black head coaches. <clears throat> then Lovey gets hired. Guys are already on the staff. Guys are already familiar with the organization. Know what's going on with the program. Knows the play. I mean, and the players seem to be very jovial about it. Why do you think a lot of the conversation out there kind of flipped? <clears throat> People were high on Flores, but but not so much on a more proven guy like Lovey Smith. What do you what do you think the issue is with that? I think it's a it's a recency bias, and and maybe was, maybe Nick Casario re- heard you rant against him. So maybe we owe this to Wise. Maybe this is Wise doing. Maybe Wise <laughs> is the wise man. Maybe that is the case. Maybe he he heard you finally bash him, and he straightened up and flow right. How about that? Maybe maybe that's the case. But 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 seriously though, just the thing. Um. I think it's more so of a reason. I think because of the success that he had in Miami or, or whatever he was doing in Miami, that you look at that and you're like, okay, yeah, let me take that guy because Lovey, I mean, yeah, I know he coached two years in, in, in Tampa and they were kind of, no, I, I think they were tanking to get Jameis Winston and things like that. Then, like, they, uh, his office coordinator basically stabbed him in the back and took over the job. He hasn't really been successful since his days in Chicago from 04 to 2012. So that's a long, I mean, that's 10 years ago. 2012 is 10 years ago. So, you know, outside, out of mind, you kind of forget about him. So that's probably the reason why they were more high on Flores than, um, uh, than uh, um, Lovey Smith. Because like I said earlier, like Lovey Smith actually has a better resume than any Texan coach that we've brought in before. Better than Don Capers. But, you know, I know Kubiak won two Super Bowls as, as offensive coordinator, but he wasn't a head coach. We all know what Bill O'Brien lacked there, what was his office coordinator, what, what he was his office coordinator, and David Cully, let's be, let's be real. So he has the best credentials as a proven head coach than any Texas head coach that we've ever brought in. To be honest, he actually has a better track record than any head coach that we've ever interviewed. Mm. I'm trying to think of I'm trying to think of somebody who we've brought in for an interview that has a better resume than Lovey Smith. Like I mean, I guess uh, I know what you call I know Caldwell. Went, I know we interviewed Caldwell last year. I know he went to the Super Bowl with the Colts, but he also had Peyton Manning. Like Lovey, uh, 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 role less travel. He went through a difficult. He had, he had a difficult role because he's the type of quarterback he had and Rex Grossman. So he actually has a better resume than anybody we've ever interviewed, let alone anybody we've given the job to. So. It's, I think, it's like I said, it's, it's more so of a recency bias with, more than anything. Okay. Okay. So I see everybody in the in the conversation having a particular in the in the chat having a particular conversation. I wasn't gonna bring it up, but let's address it. Let's go ahead and get it out the way because I know how people feel. I know what people uh, <clears throat> think. We'll start with Spitz on this one. We'll save it for Wise. I'm sure Wise has some some thoughts on this this particular question. Hold on. Can you see Wink? Can you see me? Is he, is he back in? Uh, yeah, he's been, he been back. He okay, been okay. Back. I, switched, I switched the scenes because I could uh, when he was out for a little bit. Uh, give me just a second. Um, but uh, we'll start with Spitz. As far as number four, is this move going to bring number four back? Is this move going to make number four have any interest in rejoining this team? I hope so. I mean, <laughs> I know last week Wise had a revelation and 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 and, and came back to the default website, came back to the default part part of the, part of the team, and and put down the money meals and the money cities and all those things like that, and was back on DW4. This is the thing. I said this in my video uh, earlier today. That if you go back in the training camp, <clears throat> there was one person 
every single day at camp. Then when Deshaun Watson would either walk off the practice field or walk onto the practice field, either or, would come to him, put his arm around him, and walk to wherever they were walking to and give him basically a counsel every single day. Talk to him every single day. That person is Lovey Smith. Lovey Smith is an older guy who's been head coach for the NFL, went to Super Bowl, Blase Blase. He's been around the block. He knows a lot of things that Deshaun Watson's going through just from – uh, a racial standpoint, just, 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 and also just, you want to give somebody some type of wisdom. Mm-hmm. So, who's to say? I, I do think that this is trending more so in the direction than than a Cully, because he, at the very least, he has, he is an actual legitimate coach. Mm-hmm. This, I mean, when you are Cully, you already knew what it was. Mm-hmm. Like it was, it was, it was a joke on top of a joke. Right. It was a mockery. This right here, this coach is moving. This is the reason why a lot of Texas fans like myself, like like Wise, like like Wink, like Ray Ray, a lot of guys in, in, on the round table, we can get behind this move because this is an actual legitimate candidate. When's the last time we can say that? When's the last time that we can say we hired somebody that was an actual legitimate candidate? Not just not just for a head coach. Shoot, general manager, general manager as well. But this is a guy that we can actually get behind and be okay. We can see this. This makes absolute sense. I know, weird. Texans right. making sense. I know it never happens before. But like that's what that's the type of situation we're in. So when you do stuff like that, who knows? Now you have a black OC as well and Pep Hamilton. Could this start could this turn the tide? Could the situation with the Giants backing out, Miami backing out, things like that. The, 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 now the pool of the teams that he wanted to go to is starting to get smaller and smaller, thinner and thinner. Could it be a situation where a Let's talk. Let's have. Let's let's revisit the situation because there is a reason why it's February eighth, two thousand twenty-two, and Deshaun Watson still on his roster. I know a lot of people was telling me all last year. Oh, he's not making it to uh, uh, to April. Oh, he's not making it past the first round of the draft. He's not making it past June first. He's not making it to training camp. He's not making it past the trade deadline. February eighth, two thousand twenty-two. He's still on his roster. There's a reason for that. I do think in this in uh in um uh, uh Nick Casario hard hearts, he doesn't want to trade them. He's seen what a quarterback can do for twenty years in New England. He had a, he had a bird's eye right. seat to watch Tom Brady do his thing. He doesn't want to give up on somebody just that quickly. And my I, that's why I believe in, in Nick Casario's hard hearts. Right. So will it happen? Who knows? Only those people know only Deshaun and Cal really know the real answer to that situation. We can sit up and speculate all we want. We can want. We can not want. We can want to get traded. Whatever. Only the only people who have that real control is actually uh, Cal McNair, in in, in air quotes, and Sean Watson. So I hope it does work out for the best. But we have to see what happens. Okay. Okay. Uh, shout out to Lord Freezer. <clears throat> Appreciate the superstar super chat. Love say somewhere in the Kirby six ten. Jack Easterby is making holes in the wall since McCall didn't get the job. I uh, wouldn't be surprised. Um. And in quarantine, Carpenter Bill says Watson will join a team with a white head coach. Well, he might. He liked Bill O'Brien a whole lot. That's why I found it very odd that, you know, the rumors were coming out saying that Watson only wanted to play for a black head coach. And then, you know, just the year before he was caping uh, extremely hard right, right. for, you know, Bill O'Brien. But, Wise, do you feel like this move enhances any chance of the Texans retaining the services of one number four? So we gotta have some revelations over here. I know Rio probably gonna be mad having a heart attack over there in Ray Ray too. They're gonna be mad in the Discord after this. But let's be honest here. Nikki Casarios, I know you watching. Always tune in to the Sauce, seven o'clock Tuesdays, Fast Twenty Six app, Sauce Sports YouTube. Because DW four, WD forty, whatever you wanna call the man. The man is the only answer for the Houston Texans. How many times does I have to say this? When we looked at these playoffs, it came down to quarterback play. Davis Mills is trash. I'm going to say it every week. Davis Mills is trash. Davis Mills is trash. The only thing he can be is a Rez Grossman, a Matt Schaaf, backup quarterbacks. Um, and Deshaun Watson, do we not forget the play that this man made? <clears throat> do we not forget it wasn't Deshaun Watson that let us down? In these football games, it was the defense. 
Now we got a defensive coach. Now we got a defensive mindset, uh, culture for this team, and we're gonna have that wrapped up. And you know, you know what Deshaun Watson can do with star receivers. We had a Kiki QT who dropped the ball every game. We had a Jordan Akers who was already past his prime when we drafted him and dropping wide open balls against the Chicago Bears and losing to Mitchell Trubisky's. I don't forget those situations. So when you actually put a good head coach around Deshaun Watson, you put a leader of men around this guy, and you actually take his considerations and listen to the guys he want to bring in. Like, it's kind of shameful that Cincinnati had drafted Joey Burrow, JB, one of the goals already. Um, they drafted him, and they listened to him as being a rookie. They, he said, I wanted my boy, I wanted Jamal Chase, and guess what they went to go do with the number five pick in the draft? They went and got Jamal Chase. Why yep. couldn't the Houston Texans go do that for Deshaun Watson when they came to go in and get a general manager and a head coach? So I'm tired of y'all always complaining and saying, oh, it's Deshaun Watson's fault. It's Deshaun Watson's fault. No, the franchise felt Deshaun Watson. Now it's time for both parties to rectify the situation because we're not going to act like Deshaun Watson is an innocent party over here. The man do got 20 situations. But like, like what, what Wise will say, the man is innocent until proven guilty. Do not throw dirt on this man's name. He should be the starting franchise quarterback. He's going to be making $35 million. And that's the reason why he's going to be making $35 million. Because this guy's going to get the city of Houston in the Super Bowl like he promised. He can be a Ben Rossers for good joining us, if you know what I'm saying. Um. You know, this is this is a proper polite night, so I'm not going to say anything <clears throat> about Watson. I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. And his his activities. Y'all not see me? Things. Yeah, we see. Yeah, we see. Uh, oh, okay, okay. <clears throat> right, I ain't know. Yeah, just just I'm just going to leave it at that. Why, uh, Wink, your thoughts, man? Do you feel like this has any possibility to bring Watson back into the fold uh, for the Houston Texans? Um, I don't see why not. I don't see why not. For one, the optics of the situation points to that situation. You have a black head coach who was in constant communication with Deshaun Watson throughout his tenure last season, whether he was on the field, on the sidelines, watching these guys in practice. Mm -hmm. Nick Casario and the league, the, like Deshaun Watson stopped himself from having from from being in a situation where he was in a horrible situation with the Houston Texans. I don't fault him for playing. The only thing I fault him for is not keeping the conversation about his play in order. That's what I the only thing that I can really charge him for and I understand people are going to look at him a different kind of way in in, in terms of how he handles stuff as a man. I'm only talking about Deshaun Watson, the player. Deshaun Watson, the player, did not want to play under no David Cully, and for good reason. Okay. Lovey Smith could be a whole nother could be a whole nother thing. If I, I believe if he plays for um, if somehow they're able to get themselves in a situation, well, at least we don't have to worry about a quarterback. We won't have to worry about seeing Davis Mills ever again because he's going to be completely phased out as an option for the Houston Texans. The only way he plays is if Deshaun Watson gets hurt. If he doesn't get hurt, we're never going to see Davis Mills get on the field again unless it's a massive blowout and he's kneeling the ball. Um, as far as um, you know, what Nick Asario and Cal McNair have chosen to do, and to uh, Spitz's and Wise's point, it, 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 it's, it's clear to see that Nick Asario didn't want this man gone. The fact that they, they haven't handed out any sanctions to Deshaun Watson in terms of being suspended or being barred from the from playing in the NFL, speaks more volumes of where the case more than likely really is. They have to have some involvement in the situation, and the fact that he's been able to play football and he chose not to speaks even more volumes. He gets his man back on the field. You let him throw touchdowns the way he can. You let him get off script. You do everything you can to protect him. You implement game plans. We're gonna win football games, and all this is gonna be water under the bridge anyway. Okay. <clears throat> well, I don't care what Watson thinks. This team meals over here, so whether he does or doesn't, hopefully he doesn't. 
We can get the draft picks and we can move forward. A black forward. man rooting for a white man in Black History Month. Just yes. pointing that out. Yes, 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 yes. Uh-huh. Team Mills. <laughs> you know. Y'all and, talking and, about me. And then and then and they need to and they need to bring bring McCown in as a quarterback <clears throat> coach. Yes, yes. So we can get to the crown. Is 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 dark as hot show is. Mm. See, this is the real racism during Black History Month right here. We do it to Spitz. Spitz just had a whole rant of how we do it to ourselves. And then look, see what I'm saying? Can't help yourself. See, that's that's what's that's that's our problem right there. Uh, but now, you know, we are. I, I'm, a, I'm a brown brother too. What you mean? What you mean? My, my, my deal is this, man. Like I say, I just realistically, I don't know how you come back from the whole situation. Whether it was Cully, whether it, it's 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 um, I'm about to call him Pep. Whether it's Lovey now or whatever it is, I think those ties have just been severed. Like. Just the 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 whole deal, and I've seen a lot of people in there talking. Let's like go ahead and kill this real real quick. No, 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 nobody wants little fun size uh, QB. Nobody wants to trade Arizona for. Kyle. I don't care if he took all the socials off. But I I take meals ten times out of ten over no. Mighty Mouse, bro. Like not gonna do it. Not gonna entertain it. Uh, <laughs> shout out to Voodoo says all praise Cal Comex. Y'all have gone too far. Actually, y'all, y'all that, was a better name. that was disrespectful. I'll take Colin Murray over Davis Mills. He's a sorry bastard. No oh, man. Kyle. Yeah, yeah, I'll, yeah, yeah. I'll take. Nah, if, if Colin Murray come here, he gonna have to borrow Braylon's stool. You know what I'm saying? Then what Braylon gonna do? How, how Braylon gonna reach the heights that he need to reach? If Kyler Murray, what, 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 you, what, what you mean? <laughs> Again, always, 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 just brothers slandering brothers. Mm. Like, come on, man. He's from Texas. <laughs> he's the all time winningest quarterback on, in the man. state of Texas. <laughs> Love, he's a coach who's come from Texas. Mm-hmm. It's just perfect. It's just... Well, I'm going to see why Kyler don't, don't fit on, the bill, man. man. <laughs> I'm going to tell you why Kyler don't fit the bill. What's the number one saying about the state of Texas? Everything's bigger in Texas. Kyler Murray, hey, the littlest man in the league. Hey, I don't, I don't know, man. But yeah, I see all that. Yeah, he took all the social media stuff. Deep down there. at night, the stars shine bright. Deep in the heart of Texas. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't do that, I guess. But, <laughs> but like I said, so so there's absolutely no interest in uh in, in Kyler Murray. But uh, shout out to Voodoo says, I'll praise Cal Comex. Y'all done gave Cal a name. See, y'all doing them like Sean King over there. Uh, did the Easter Beef, shout out to D Skills, said, did the Easter Beef factor disappear? Not long ago, fans were saying the Texans wouldn't succeed with him in the building. That's a great question, man, because I think that says something. Because, again, we've heard lots of rumors, whispers, murmurs, and people say, oh, you got, you got, you got like two sides of this Easter Beef thing. You got the people who just don't give a damn. Or, oh, no, there's no way. And the people who are looking at the details and the behavior and saying something's not right here. Like, is there a thing that we can, uh, we have hard evidence to put on Easter and say, this is what he did, this is where he messed up the program, this is what, no. But if you look at his meteoric rise from a chaplain, right? Chaplain to what, uh, what is he, what, the vice president of football operations or something like that? Like, that's not a thing that happens in the time frame. That, that the only thing that could have surpassed that rise would, it would have been if they hired Josh McCown. That, that would have been the only thing that could have trumped somebody going from nothing to something yeah. that quick. That would have been the only way. But anyway, this is what happened when he used to be, but hey, you believe you can achieve. But what this tells me is, so if that, let's say that element is there, say that Easterby element is there, say he is in Cal's ear. Is that saying that maybe Casario is wielding more authority uh, in there than we believe because people said, oh, you know, Jack got him in there to, uh, you know, that's, that's his buddy, so they're going to be, you know, in cahoots or whatever. But everybody was saying Easter Bee's leaning towards McCown, and then you see this last-minute change in the lovey. What is that telling you about that relationship dynamic? Do you think there's something there? Do you think all the Easter Bee hype is blown out of proportion? Or, you know, did, did uh, Nikki come in there, you know, and, 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 and put his foot down? We'll start with Wink. What are, what are your thoughts on that, that, that dynamic between um, Easter Bee and Sarah? Man, look, man, right this, is, this, is a, this is, this is, this is, this is, this is Nick Casario with the deuce of spades and just slamming it on the table <laughs> and just saying, I don't give a damn what you talking about. You don't have no real input. You ain't got nothing to say around here. You provide no context to football whatsoever. When I need a passage read from the Bible, then you can be then you can be useful. I side of, go sit your ass down somewhere. Dude is absolute garbage, bro. Ever since he's been here, like 
things started happening and the character of people on this football team started being brought to question more since he's been in this franchise. We let go of Deshaun, I mean, DeAndre Hopkins. We let go of uh, Damian Clowney, along with many others. And they're being let go for the wrong reasons that are not related to football. And the fact that it's happened to so many stars, it begs the question as to who is really doing this. Bill O'Brien has something to do with it. Jack Easterby, I feel, was an even bigger I think he had he had a much bigger role than people were willing to give him credit for. And it, and it is what you say. The fact that this man could go to a chaplain to be in one of the main people in the front office to be able to have, you know, the fact that he has this much say and you bring Nick Casario into a situation where he has to be the GM and the fact that he's overridden what Nick Casario would have made, probably would have done. It just goes to show that they hired the right man to the job to be able to make the decisions that are football related in Nick Casario. I'm not willing to crown him. I'm not willing to say that he's he's going to be a great GM for the Houston Texans, but at least I am willing to cut him to second state. He's going in the right direction by getting um, a head coach in here, regardless of his, um, the pigment of his skin, to do the job and get it done right on short notice. It's no reason that Lovey shouldn't have been in the mix from the get go. And it's funny to see how people on Texans that you know on Texans Twitter as well as the atmosphere surrounding Texans media. And it's a shame the fact that these people have credentials and they flip flop and stand on absolutely nothing. You know exactly who you are. It's a bunch of peons out here who are willing to talk about the Texans. They claim to be fans supposedly but then they have no moralistic, they have no morals, they have no values. And at the end of the day, these people cannot be trusted because they'll do anything for a dollar and attention. You know what I'm saying? Like, go ahead and give them the, the needle that Suge Knight gave to, um, to uh, Easy e and go ahead and end everything. Because these dudes right here, bro, I don't know exactly whoa, whoa, what it is. Whoa, 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 I just whoa, don't know what it is, bro. <laughs> what? <laughs> Respectfully. Wow. Oh, <laughs> anyway, y'all, y'all, y'all in the I'm chat. <laughs> y'all know what it is. Because here's the thing. Y'all in the chat have been seeing it, too. Like I say, we fans talking to fans. We're not no expert. We're not media critics. We're we're talking about the team that we love. If, if we didn't, and you know the years that we've been putting into this, and especially if you you knew this, if you're catching it through Fox, if you catch it through the app, you know, uh, welcome. If you've been down with this for, you know, the existence of the, y'all already know uh, what's going down. But um, your thoughts, wise? Like, did, does each of you really have the power they said he did? Do you think there's some suspicious there, or are people just kind of hyping it out, or or did? Casario come in and take over. I mean, what are your thoughts? What's that? What's the dynamic happening over there on Kirby, in your opinion? Uh, it's a wait and see. Uh, when I watched today's interview today for the press conference, well, I really didn't watch. I listened to it. Uh, but when I listened to it, basically I was hearing things about Nicky Casario talking about his situation being involved with Pep Hamilton when it comes to the offensive side of the ball, being involved uh, – with the head coach on uh, certain things they see in uh, scouting during the game, doing some uh, looking at different schemes that the defense is running when he's uh, trying to call offensive plays and things of that sort. So that's something that kind of worries me, gives me a little bit of Bill, o Bill O'Brien kind of vibes. So if Nicky Casario can stay in his own lane and focus on being a general manager or overseer, Nicky Casario's. We understand you want to be a great general manager, but Nicky Casarios, what we want to see is Nicky Casarios come in with a nice polos, with a nice jogging pants, maybe a nice suit, the sitting up vest. there with Cal McNair on the field, just like Chris used to do during the game. Yeah, or being in the owner's or in being in the owner's suite. We don't even see Nicky Casarios with the telescope, telescope <laughs> like this, looking down at the game, trying to be involved with the coaches. No, Nicky Casarios, you're not a coach. You're not a coach. I'm sorry. 
I know you was trying to be a receiver's coach. I know you was trying to do this. You was trying to do that. No, we got experienced guys now. Trust Pell Hamilton. Let him do what he got to do. Trust Lovey Smith. Let him do what he got to do. That's the problem with the Houston Texans organization. It's always been a problem with the Houston Texans organization. Because you got to look at it. This is the same thing what Bill O'Brien was doing. He was dibbling and dabbling with being a head coach, being an offensive coordinator, being a time management coach, or having a time management problems, and then trying to be a general manager at the same time. And look what it put us at now. So, Nicky Casario, stay in your lane, wear a nice suit, bubble vest, jug and pants, watch the game, evaluate, take some good notes, run it back, and then discuss that with Jack to be if you don't want to do that in the offices. Stop bringing Jack to be in the locker room, giving guys uh, messages before the game. That's lame. I'm sorry. Even though I've lived in this and that, it's annoying. Jack to be looks like um, – I'll save that for the SPS sauce, but yeah. Um, <laughs> it's the real bad situation. Nikki Casarios, I believe in you. Like I said, I gave you an apology. Nikki Casarios, you got to do the right thing. You got to do the right thing this season. Don't get involved with the coaches. If the coaches, let the coaches do the coach, what the coaches are paid to do and let them guys succeed. All righty? All righty. That's my last message to Nikki Casarios for today. Shout out to Houston Tech Talks. Like Sarah don't blink, much less need binoculars. And uh, you mentioned new O-line because we'll definitely get into that in just a second. But Spitz, what's happening over there on Curry? What's, what's, what's this casario uh, Easterby relationship like in your opinion? Or fans just blowing this whole thing out of proportion? <clears throat> no, they're not blowing this thing out of proportion. This is what's, what's funny to me is that teams always, especially these Houston Texans, always want to model a franchise or model a, uh, a championship organization, except they don't model the thing that makes them championship right. organizations. Like, they do everything but. Like, you want to take and dabble and steal from... Uh, like, how about this? You're the general manager. You hire people. You delegate. You let them do their job. You hire people to do a job, and you allow them to do their job. Why do you feel like you need to do their job for them? And I'm mm-hmm. actually glad that Wise brought this up because this is one thing I want to say. Like, Houston, please. Do something with this media because I'm sick and tired every time we hire a head coach, every time we hire a general manager, game after game after game, press conference before after game, we come up there with them cookie cutter soft answers and cookie cutter soft questions like, oh, I don't want to lose my credentials, so I'm gonna ask these puff questions and I'm gonna ask this, ask the real questions. And if you go and then if you wanna ask a question, ask it the way you're supposed to be asked. Ask how you're supposed to ask it. You should ask Nick Cereal this right here. Hey, look. Hey, I know last year you were in the headset. You were calling plays and calling timeouts. You were helping out David Cully because, you know, he was a first-time head coach. Do you feel like you need to do this with Lovey Smith? Because Lovey Smith went to a Super Bowl and went to two NFC Championship games, have won 11-plus games multiple times, has been a head coach for over 10 years. So do you think that you need to do the same thing with, uh, with David or, uh, with, um with Lovey Smith, and when he answers yes or no, ask Lovey Smith the same question. Lovey, are you okay with this? Uh, uh, Lovey, do you feel like you need somebody in the headset with you while you run the game? Ask the question. Don't well, you know that? No, don't give them, don't give us these little soft answers. We tired of this. That's the reason why they look at who's no way they look at. That's the reason why they look at us like we soft because we act like we soft. And anybody who's ever been to City used to know we anything but. Correct. Houston's anything but. But yet still, we got all these people who are out of towners who ain't from the city, representing the city, and doing this little cookie cut stuff right. right here. That's why you got the person who represents the Houston Texans from a media standpoint out there covering the, the Tennessee Titans. Mm. He's supposed uh, right. uh, let me tell you about the Love You Blue Day. Let me tell you about this. Uh, that, that's all he good for. Right. But yet still, y'all want to sit up here and have him ask all the Houston Texas questions. Oh, we looked at him when it's time to break down Houston Texas news when half the week he in Nashville breaking down Titans as well. Come on, Houston. Y'all look weak right now. Y'all look weak. Right. Triple pancake right. stack. And, yes. I, and I agree with that, man. And that's that's a big <laughs> issue I have with the the Houston media as a whole is like you say, you look at some of these other cities, you look at the L.A.'s, Phillies, the, the, the New Yorks, you know, these places where you've traditionally seen winning teams. Philly, you can kind of take that however you want to. They've been competitive if you want to look over history. But, like, their fans don't take that type of stuff. They are going to go out. If they don't like what they see, they're going to complain. If they're not feeling what's going on, they're going to make their voices heard. But here in Houston, and this is why I say I, I have more beef with the fans 
than I do with the ownership, especially when right. we talk about the Texans, is because we allow this. Like, we still got that ex-girlfriend right, oiler right. syndrome, like you mentioned, the love you blue and all that. Like, there's still right. enough of a crowd who kind of want to hear that. Like, it's time for that transition right. to happen. Right, right. Because that's, that's, that's done. I'm like, look, little was just much as anybody else, but that's done. They're talking about us. Like, so ain't no love no more. Like, you know, that, that's a, a completely right. different situation. Right, right, like, right. But now if they came back and became the North Side Oilers, and that's another conversation. But um, North Side. You know. hey, hey, but, no, but let me let me let me let me chime this in too. Let me chime this in too. Do y'all really think that in New York, Jets or Giants, in Philadelphia, in uh, Washington, in Pittsburgh, in uh, I'll even give that even now because. Well, in Chicago, I, I wouldn't say Dallas, but they got, got Jerry Jones. Never mind. But anyway, any of these hardcore blue blood collar cities, they have blue blood. The, the, the NFL teams are better in them. Do y'all really think they will let them? They will let the franchise interview Josh McCown three times in a calendar year for a head coaching job? Like seriously, do y'all think that they they they, they have been on no, the front no. pa- front no. and back page no. of the New York Times? What are the Giants doing? What are the Jets doing? This is well, you know. I expect them to hire Josh McCown. We were like, "Oh, okay, that's what we're going to do." Mm-hmm. Like, come on! Like, no other city will allow this to happen. And no. like I say, it is. I've been a fan since no, two thousand two, no, no. and it just gets on my nerves when I see this type of stuff. Mm-hmm. When I look at other teams, like other organizations and teams, don't operate like this. Why do we continuously allow it to happen? I think you're right. They're afraid that they're going to leave. They're like, in the back of their minds, they got that Titan syndrome. Oh, I, I don't want them to up and leave and pack in the middle of the night and become the uh, um, uh, uh, San Antonio Steve or something. I don't know. But it, 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 it's, just, it's, just, it's, just, it's just it's just, just idiotic, man. Yeah, it, it really is. is. But to me, but, but okay, but even, even to that space, even to that space, no organization that has won – uh, no organization that's won a Super Bowl, been in contention to win Super Bowls, or is doing everything they can to change their culture, would never accept none of this. You are 100% correct. Bro, Houston sports is trash, especially when it comes to Houston Texans football. I have never seen a soft fan base. Hands down, this is the softest fan base in all of Houston, of all sports. I have never seen a fan base so mediocre and so willing to accept mediocrity. And then it, 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 even the it, like, and it's a shame that fans on both sides cannot come together. We can only come together when it comes to the winning aspect. And even that, I even think, well, it's not really, it's not really the way that it should be. But it's just like, why? Why is this team so? Why is this? Why is, is this place so divided? Why do you believe in these guys who have been trashed? Like, we should be beyond a first round in the playoffs. We should be above the divisional round. We should be above a lot of things that we should do. We should be tired of having a good defense with no offense. We should be tired of having an elite quarterback with no defense, no head coach no front office, and no damn special teams. Like, it makes me sick. It's a burger with no bun. It it, makes... Why can't we just put it all together for once? And you know why? Because the people who are at the top have no vision, they have no purpose, they have no plan, and they have no way to execute any of it if they did have it within the organization. No, I agree, and like I say, man. But it, it it has to be also, like I say, it has to be it has to be in you, not on you. And I think you know we can talk about it. We've been talking about it for a while. But if you're just not a person who wants more, who strives for more, then you know maybe you're not going to accept more, expect more out of your own team. You know, because when you look at the Texans, and this is something we've talked about for years, is if you were to to throw out an identity. If you would have to say, if somebody said, give me an elevator pitch on the Texans or, you know, one word, tell me what the identity of the Texans, it would take you a bit because what is it? You, you, you don't really know unless you just go with mediocrity. You know what I mean? But you look at these other teams and you say, somebody, you know, tell me to, you know, what, what you think of a Pittsburgh or you, you think of a whatever, any team. You know what I'm saying? You're going to have something. There's going to be a leg. There's going to be a, 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 a steel curtain. When you talk about that, you're going to think of a um, – right. A, a legion of boom or you know especially those things that they were in right. their, in their their heydays like you don't 
you don't really got that with it. Like you say, Bulls on Parade, but what did the Bulls on Parade really amount to? You know what I mean? Like, ultimately, it was fun to watch. Little but, bit jacket. Yeah, you know, and, and again, so, like, we have, there's a point when you reach a certain uh, point, you're like, like you, you have to continue to strive for more. Like, oh, well, if we get back there again, that's cool. No, it's not. Uh, what you got to spit? Like, uh, 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 I agree, because when you talk about identity, tell me why they keep playing that uh, Clay Walker song, Football Time in Houston, and he's a Titans fan. When you had guys in Houston that they're from Houston make songs about the Texans and play not a second of it in the stadium. Mm. Like, there go not your identity more. right there. No key, you, you have guys no friend, that are no from this world. city who are, who, are, who bleed deep steel right. red, battle, uh, 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 deep steel blue, battle red, and liberty white, who talk about it in songs, have made several talk, have made several songs, name mixtapes after it. Mm-hmm. But yet still, you don't play none of their music, but yet still, you play a guy who says football time in Houston, he's a Titans fan. Mm-hmm. Like, come on. Like, there you go. We don't we don't accept the identity that we truly have. The Texans have an identity, but the organization doesn't accept it. Case in point, the Houston Roughnecks. Houston Roughnecks got here, and in a matter of in a matter of days and weeks, became part of Houston because they accepted the identity that the city of Houston provided for Absolutely. them. They accepted it, Absolutely. took on to it, and ran with it. And that's the reason why you had a lot of fans that were behind the Roughnecks. Even when the pandemic was first starting, those stadiums was full. Now, granted, the, the Roughnecks were winning games. They did go undefeated before the season ended. But still, the, they represented the city. And now you have people out there talking about, I'd rather be a Roughneck fan than be a Texan fan because, at right. the very least, they represent what I see. They represent what I am. Right. Right. When is, when is Toro going to pull up in the slab with the, and pop the truck? Toro should have been. going to do that? Yeah, should have been done years ago. When he going to do that? You know what I'm saying? When he going to do that? <laughs> <laughs> Should have been done it. They're also- he gonna pull up a pop truck, and, and then when, when the when the when the when 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 the truck come up, when is it? When is we gonna pan in on what the back of the trunk say? Yeah, it's going down. Yeah. When is it gonna say that? Exactly. It's never going to say that because at the end of the day, these dudes is from South Carolina and ain't got no Texas blood in them, and they don't give a damn about what they can provide the city outside of. Killing it for its resources in terms of its football team. That's what they care about, and that's exactly why they saw a dip in production as far as who they have in the who they had in their seats, mm-hmm. and how many other and how many other teams we played this year. They jerseys filled up all of them seats this year. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So out to D skills say, in my opinion, fans showed anger last season by not showing up. This year is the same old media has been in place for two decades, just have no passion anymore. And I agree. You know, there's always time for a change, man. Uh, there, there's a point where you, people find themselves past their prime. And it, it can be hard when you've done a thing all your life. Yeah, I understand. You don't want to give that up, especially if it's something you love. But if, you know, you just ain't in, if you're not keeping up with, you know, technology you're not keeping up with the changes or you just sometimes you just you just get past by life can pass you by you know what i mean and that's where i feel like we are now but the biggest problem i have <clears throat> when we talk about the fans we talk about you know being soft is the acceptance because fans will show a little bit of anger or they'll show that they're a little upset about something but then as soon as the text makes some sort of official announcement right. around the matter then the fans just turn. They're like, oh, okay, well, it's, it's not that big of a deal. Or, or it wasn't as bad as we thought it That's was. That's my quarterback. Yeah, you know. And so it's That's crazy. That's my QB. <laughs> That's my head coach. <laughs> Shout out to Tremaine. Say, go Patriots. That ain't even mad at you. So some super soft, super chat love. I'll say it. Uh, what you got there, wise man? Nikki Casarios, I got another message. Nikki Casarios, because <laughs> I know Nikki Casarios is the dude that's running the franchise right now. We need new uniforms. We need a new logo. Oh, yes. yes. We need... If we're gonna have uniform we're gonna have red jerseys, we gotta have the red pants, we gotta have the red helmets, we gotta have the red socks, we gotta go full red. If we're gonna have the blue, we gotta go all blue. If we're gonna have white, we're gonna have all whites. We need a new logos, we need a new helmets, we even have throwback jerseys. That's a shame. Yeah. How do we not have a throwback jersey? It's been right. twenty years. It's been twenty years and we haven't all we added was a little small logo on the back of the jersey. When you go to the Texans game, they're talking about uh, the only little thing they got is when the players running out of the tunnel and they scream the, they say the first name and they scream the last name. Like that's lame. But I, I can't give the Texans this to be a hundred percent honest with you. When you go to the Texans game, the atmosphere is 
way more better than some of the other stadiums that I've been uh, to across the stadium. Some stadiums don't have the football aspect. Kansas City has a phenomenal, phenomenal atmosphere where you feel like you're just a part of the game and stuff like that. Right. Like the fans are standing up, the fans are into the game. Fans are gonna talk smack about if a player doing bad, they don't care. They're gonna be like, this player need to be in the game. Right. Like they're gonna be 100 percent with the franchise. They're gonna tell the, the owners are more involved with the fans. Like when you go to a Chiefs game, you'll see the owner walking around the stadium. You'll see him talking to people, taking uh, photos with the fans. Cal mm-hmm. McNeil don't do that. He's sitting in the owners. He's sitting in the owner box with his wife. They're looking high the tight, and I mean they're just chilling. But <laughs> I mean at the end of the day, the fans, y'all gotta stop being soft. Mm-hmm. Y'all make the city look bad. Uh, y'all really depressing. Y'all over here talking about Davis Mims. You too, Huncher. You're a part of the problem. You're talking about Davis <laughs> Mims as the franchise quarterback. Like, this is really a I problem. I'm, I'm, I'm being 100% honest with you. Yeah, I know like, this is. is a part of the problem. Like, Davis Mims is not the answer. Stop it. Josh McCown wasn't the answer. I don't see how guys was defending this guy as being the potential head coach. Are you, like, right. do you accept mediocrity at home when you chose your wife when you chose your girl did you chose an average person when you chose your job did you chose the average situation that you want to be in because if that's the type of life that you live that's very disappointing i just gotta say that you don't want to be mediocre it's 2022 we're trying to get on to bigger and better things in life so expect more from you yourself and expect more from this uh, houston texas franchise because they do represent the city yes yes we'll see it and uh yes st lou I put you in timeout because you're there talking crazy about the Rockets. Um, so here, here's the deal, bro. And ultimately, though, we know what this franchise is. And uh, what do they what do they call that? Uh, I forgot the, the the proper term. But basically, when you a sunk cost. Basically, when it's something you can't recuperate, and you know you're trying to turn something into something valuable, or you're trying to you know improve something. Like we can't go back and fix any of the mistakes that the Texans made. All that investment that we made into that is fans. That's some no. cost. It is what it is. But you have a decision right. from this point forward as to how you choose to be a fan. And <clears throat> I just wish that this city would expect more. You know, set like why I said, you know, you gotta set higher standards. Even with Lovey, I don't care if this is his first day, he's a professional. Professionals are they get paid to right. do a job, so he knows what's expected. He's been to the biggest, so he knows what it takes. So I'd have even less leeway on um, Lovey than I would on Cully, because we know Cully was a joke. He was a stopgap. Oh, he was a used band aid. You know what I mean? So he wasn't gonna stick around. But uh, a guy like Lovey has credentials, and I know people are trying to come out. Oh, it's it, right. it, uh, people said, oh well, well. Uh, the same people who tried to give Cully some sort of leeway because they want to be in a grievance text they will come back out now they're saying oh well uh, uh, Lovey's going to be a stop gap too so that's going to be a bunch of stop gap coaches like that makes no sense to me like I think the Texans front office is goofy I think there's a lot of questionable moves being going on Right. but I think the long term even if this is a PR play even if this is the, the legitimate move because what they said is that Lovey was a part of all of the interviews with all the other coaches and then when they took a step back and they looked at it and they said, hey, well, maybe Lovey's the guy, you know, compared to, you know, they, you know like I say, they were inferring with him uh, with all that, with, with everybody they were interested in. Cool, whatever. But um, like I said, I don't think they're that dumb to go and again be in this same situation next year. I think Lovey gets a couple of years because I think if you back to doing this, like, why? What are you doing? Are you are you biding time? <clears throat> For Casario to, to try to get that roster established, you get him to pay, like, what are you doing if you do this again? So I got a hard time feeling like that Lovey's just going to be another stopgap guy. Do I think ultimately he's the guy that's in their plans? Right. No, but I think he's a guy that can be um, a serviceable quality coach. And, again, you have no excuses for, you know, whatever outcome happens because, like I said, you've got a full draft. You potentially got some assets with some guys that you can trade, some big names, uh, if that goes that route. Yeah. So, like I said, it's just ultimately, like I say, there's no excuses and no fan should feel sorry for any of these people. Like, at this point, like, you should have an expectation as a Texans fan, at the very least, an AFC South, I mean, an AFC championship appearance. Like, uh, Super Bowl right. is the goal. But at, at the very like, it's time to set the standard higher. Right. If they're not achieving that, like, right. what, what are you doing? You're wasting, you're wasting your fandom time and all this stuff watching these games that you're not going to get back just to continue to watch the same product? No. It, it, it's time to want right. more as a collective. And kind of like Spitz said and, and others have said, when you, when you talk to this fan base, we're so divided. It, it's, it's ignorant right. because it's to the point where 
you can't have a simple conversation. Like you can't even bring up an idea right. or a slightly differing thought. If it's uh, not 100% protection, you're going to have these people come, oh, see, they, they hating and they, they doing it. And then you could be right because the stuff doesn't work out. It doesn't pan out. We've seen the story before. Uh, and then those people right. get mad at you for pointing it out, you know. Uh, and instead of getting mad at the franchise for and, continuing to do the stuff, they get mad at you. You know, that makes no sense. What are we saying in Spitz? And the, and, and the, re- and the reason why is because of the way it's been presented. Because for the past 20, I mean, now it's the franchise has been for 20 years. But before that, for the past, for the 15 years prior, all it was was puff pieces. Mm-hmm. There, there was no there was no soft sports. There was no Ray Ray Rance. There was no space YouTube. There, there was no. It was we wasn't out here back then. We went back out, out here 10 years ago doing videos to get people the, the what, what a lot of fans were feeling. They would just get everything they would hear off these. Right. Stations here, TV shows here, they are being produced and being brought up by this organization, giving all these puff pieces. So that's what they've been used to. That's what they feel. That's what they see. They be getting all these puff pieces. And it's it's just very, very irritating. And so I, I can't really... I can't really blame the fans because you've been get you've been you've been getting sugar and candy all this time, mm-hmm. and now all of a sudden now somebody actually trying to give you some vegetables. They trying to give you some substance. They trying to give you some. They trying to give you something that's substance. You don't want that because you've been too busy eating sugar all this time and getting all this candy. Now you don't want a real meal. You ruin your appetite. That, that's really what it was. The Texas organization right. has ruined the fans' appetite when it comes to getting the real. When this the real was going on, they getting all these puff pieces, and then you got all these people out here, like I said, with these with these. Off credentials and the reason why they out here mad now they're finally speaking out against the Texas, but they're not speaking out against right. the Texas because they feel like us. They speaking out against the Texas because they no longer have plugs inside the organization and they don't know what's going on. But for the for the past two weeks, oh it's gonna be McCown, oh it's gonna be Gannon, oh it's gonna be this, oh it's gonna be that, and now these rugs get pulled up beneath them and they oh now it's Levy Smith. Well, this is a stupid hire. I can't believe they're doing this. This is only because of the uh, of the Florida side because they no longer have a plug in the, in the, in the organization. I know uh, um, Week because Week watches the show just like I do. They act like Tariq and Power. They they lost the plug. They ain't got no more plug. Now they don't know what to do. Like that's exactly what's going on. So because of that, like like so now they're speaking out, and now everybody's like, whoa! Now the big wigs now now Houston media starting to speak out. They're not speaking out because that's how they really feel. They're speaking out because they no longer have an inside man in the job. Because remember, they're getting paid to cover this team, so they're going to give you a different spin because they're getting paid. Wait, wait, with that check when that check come, who got the name on it? Hey, I'm gonna say this right here because they uh, they got they paying me. We ain't get we out here speaking how we truly really feel. Yeah. This dude, everything that we tell him right, right. is coming from us. It's, 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 it's genuine. We ain't getting paid to tell. We know, oh, well, they told me I gotta say this. No, we, if we think somebody trash, we tell you we trash. If we think somebody good, we tell you the reason why we're good. We call each other out all the time. There's that, nothing new. So we're actually being real about our situation where everybody else, like I said, been giving all these puff pieces for the past 20 years and that's why the fan base is so divided right now. I'll tell you the thing that really showed me the... the I think the major reason... Wait, wait, uh... And I'll, uh, I'll ask it after we finish. I was gonna say I was gonna say the main reason the main reason why um, Houston fans think the way they do is because it's a major thing because of the media outlets. Think about this Houston Texans team. The only thing that we had to speak of for years before we became a team that was actually a supposed contender from 2011 to now. Well, not to now, but in years uh, in the last few years. Is because Andre Johnson was the only guy on this team noteworthy of being talked about. The man was a top three pick. The man came through, did everything that he needed to do, and he was a representation of the blue collar work ethic that this city already has. The fact that you had no one else to talk about from a a a, a, a front standpoint, the fact that you didn't have it from a GM standpoint, the fact that you didn't have a quarterback and the rest of the team, the team was deplorable for years. Andre Johnson is going, he's he's ending towards his career with the Houston Texans. Then we start to get the Arian Fosters. Then we start to get the guys who put the butts in the stands. That runs out. Every time that this team gets a national headlight, it's always, oh, they're hating on the Texans. Oh, oh, they don't like Houston. Oh, oh, like who are the Houston Texans that anybody needs to be talking about them and taking them seriously? 
Like, I really be trying to figure that out. I, like, so many people say this on so many different platforms. And this is from the guys who do Instagram pages. This is from the fans who are on Twitter. This is for all of the Facebook groups. This is for everybody who works at, at all of the local um, um, news stations and on the radio shows. They all have some sort of agenda. They know how they really feel. They're afraid to say what needs to be said. And when they do, it's only modeled after they hear somebody else say it and they just want to make it into a piece that they think they're creating conversation for. Half of the people in here aren't brave enough and don't have the nuts to stand on what it is that they really have to say. And the fact that a show like this provides clarity to fans across all of the of the organization to open your eyes to see why this team consistently makes the, the decisions that they do at all times and why they have never gotten any better. Bro, this is a team that's 18 years old, but they still exist. But their mind frame still exists in the fifth grade. They just never get any better. I agree. But uh, I said we got a, a few more minutes here before we get ready to wind it down. But um, – I want to say what, I, what, what showed me a lot about the media, really, in this city, what really changed my perspective about, you know, people who are out here covering the Texans. This is why I say as fans, like, we tell y'all all the time, it ain't got to be the sauce. Support who you feel is being genuine. You know, whoever you feel is really representing, like, Absolutely. It's, it's all love. Like I said, we ain't hating on nobody, but we just do our own thing over here. We've been kind of doing our own thing for quite some time. But right. what, what really disappointed me in Houston is when Bill O'Brien left, how everybody had a story. Every all the media members had a, a incident with Bill. They had a problem. Right. Something happened. Like everybody had stories. Why didn't you have these stories when he was here? Why 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 was none of this spoken about while right. he was here? You know, again, because especially when you talk about like journalists and journalistic integrity and you know, when you're an analyst or these things that you you're putting these labels on yourself, there's a standard that goes with each of these things. And I don't feel like uh, the people in the city are hold, upholding that standard because you're depriving the fans of the true individual that you're speaking on. So if Bill was all this and he was cussing at folks, you've seen him insulting people at practice and doing all this. Oh, he, he punched me in the eye one time and all this other different crazy stuff. Like, where were these stories when he was here? Like, because then I think that goes past just, you know, a job. I think that's some some man to man stuff. Some of these stories that I heard is like, wow, that's, I can't believe that you would openly admit that and not even have, have done it about it. But, Again, and, and so I think those people are the filters between the organization, you know, like you said, the puff pieces they write and put out, and then the fans. And, and that's the issue. So nobody for a long time has been telling the fans the truth. Nobody's been telling them, hey, it's okay to not be happy with what you're seeing put out on that field. It's okay to be upset about that. And it's okay to voice your opinion about that. But when you have so many... Well, we'll just wait and see. We'll get them next time. Uh, you know, good game, guys. Even though you got smoked by forty, you know, it's just, just, just any given. Like, no, it's tired. I'm tired of that. I'm tired of that because again, real fan base. Don't remember? I don't know if y'all remember a couple of years back, uh, probably the season before Hopkins got traded. Earlier in the year, <clears throat> they did an interview with him. I think Deshaun was on the interview with too, and he was just talking about real fan bases when he talked about like Pittsburgh and I forgot who else he mentioned he just talked about how fan bases mm -hmm, like that yep. how they respond versus what they got going in here yep. and instead of hearing what he said which he was really giving the, the Houston fan base some game like he was really giving y'all some like hey this is a winning organization uh, Tomlin don't have a losing season under his belt so at least for the last what 15 years definitely been a winning organization even prior to that a winning historically has been a winning organization this is how they act this is the standard they set you know, for their program, and they right. got rings. You know what I mean? Like, we're trying to get there. So, obviously, we're not doing something right here. We're not holding the right people accountable. Or, or we're, again, like I say, it, it's an energy, and it starts with the fans and what y'all are willing to accept and not willing to accept. And, it, and a big part of that is the media, too. And you got to you gotta look at it like, what are you? who are you willing to listen to? Like you said, some of those big prominent names in this city have been completely wrong the last few weeks a lot of people have been playing you know uh double-sided you know what i'm saying we've seen a lot of and if you, you're on the social media you see a lot of people are pointing at these people now saying wow you lost a lot of credibility in my eyes you lost a lot of uh you know merit in my eyes because you said this 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 and this to mccowns and whoever else is and now 
Right, they right. say on the outside looking in, just like us. They fans like us at this point. But what were you gonna say to uh, uh, Wink? How is it that the supposed general of all Houston media is always the, in last place? Why is mm. he? Why is why is Ian Rappaport and the, and the Adam Shifters and everybody else outside this organization always breaking Houston news and the and news in Houston never gets broken in the city first? Mm. I need to know why this happened. Because these guys don't have solid air sources because the guys who are constantly in the room, they're peons. They're not likable guys, and you can tell this when you listen to their radio shows and when you listen to them write columns in the Houston Chronicle. Mm -hmm. yeah. My time, Trill, I would agree with you too. You know, and, I, and I know it did take a lot of people initially because when, when the Oilers did leave and the Texas did come around, it took a lot of people to get on that bandwagon. It took a lot of people didn't get on that bandwagon until they reached that first playoff appearance. But because I think you had so many people who were kind of only partially invested in the Texans, only became invested in the Texans, they started to have a little bit of success. And you saw a lot, it was easy for a lot of those people to also jump ship when a lot of this nonsense has been going on. You've seen a lot of fans jump ship. Like, don't, don't think just what you saw at the no. stadium was it. you like, I mean, there's a lot of people who may not go to game, may not be so like, there's a lot of people who have converted fandom. You know, with all this tomfoolery that's been going on with the Texans. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know how many of my partners, nah, my you know how many partners from my neighborhood Patriots fans? Hmm. You know how many partners from my own neighborhood on the south side of Houston, hmm. South Park to be exact, hmm. represent like got Patriots jerseys, been Patriots fans for the last, what, 10 hmm. plus years? It's absolutely ridiculous. I never thought I would see the day, but it's been happening for quite some time, hmm. bro. Hmm. That's why. What you saying, uh, Wise Man? I forgot. You talking about Nicky Casario's? I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> well, Nicky oh, oh yes, I remember now. I remember now. Oh. <laughs> Nicky Casario, <laughs> if you draft, if you draft, and Ray would agree with me on this one, Kara Liftis at number three, or if you draft Kenny Pickett at number three, or if you draft any other sorry bastard and reach like we did a couple of years ago, mm. Wise will be on free agencies. Free agency starts pretty soon, and I will be choosing a new franchise too. <laughs> and I do. Will, I will still cover the Texans, but I will just be a fan of uh, my favorite players and and support those teams because the Texans haven't did anything for me. So why should I continue to benefit them? I agree. I agree. Because ultimately, the, and, I, and I tell people to so look at Joey B, Bengals. Mm -hmm. yeah. I tell people to look at it like this. I think fans got it backwards because no, so many fans ahead. idolize players uh, and things like that. I think that you got, <laughs> I think that you got a situation where uh, people feel hurt whenever they not, um, you know, getting what they want. They be afraid, like, but the fans hold the power, and that's what they don't realize. Like, as a fan. You hold the power, but it has to be collective. You know what I'm saying? As an individual fan, no, it's not going to be anything. But fans got to come together. So even if we have these multiple divisions in the fan base, we all want the same thing, which is victory. And I think that if we can get the side that's just accepting whatever the Texans do to kind of come over to the side of, hey, we want wins no matter what. Like, we have no more excuses. We've been committed for 20 years. Um, I can't say there's a lot of stuff in my life I've been committed to for 20 years. So uh, – it's just time to win. But, you know, like I said, we'll dive into that real soon because it's about that time to start winding down. But uh, before we get up out of here, gentlemen, y'all got some stuff. Uh, y'all want to say, Wink, anything you want to say to the people before we get ready to shut it down? Man, appreciate um, Fox 26. You know, once again, Isaiah Curry, everybody over there at Fox, you guys did a um, spectacular job. Thank you guys for reaching out to us once again to be able to provide a um, – quality content on your um, platform. Uh, shout out to the rest of the round table, the original round table as we speak. You know, not all of these fake round tables that they're trying to make in Houston. You know what I'm saying? The idea of round table wasn't even in effect until four years after we were created. So I find your timing extremely odd. But you know what it is. Shout out to Hunt throwing the rest out. We're going to be giving y'all another one next week.
Yes, yes. And uh, real quick before we shut it all down, too, we, got, we need four more likes, y'all. We, 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 we need four more funky likes to get to the hundo. If you, unless we just salt. Four more. Unless we got more salt uh, than flavor in here. Unless we got more salt than flavor in here, I mean, y'all do what y'all do. We got I know four head eyes. I know, I know we, ain't, we ain't full of haters. You know, if you got love, you know, hit the like button. Hit the dislike. Hit one of them buttons. Just let us know you participate. Wise man, anything you want to say before we slide up out of here? I ain't saying nothing until we get four likes. Y'all better give us four <laughs> likes. Like, stop it. Come on, man. Uh, we and you want to know what good. else is four ninety nine? You yeah. know what else is four ninety nine? The Patreons. Join the Patreon. It's four ninety nine. Get in that Discord conversation. We're gonna hop into Discord probably for a few minutes after this. I ain't gonna be in the Discord too late tonight, but uh, it's a lot of conversations going around in the city of Houston. Nikki Casario is put up a shut up time. I'm gonna keep saying that. You got the draft coming up. You got the free agency coming up in a month. Um, Houston, Te- Houston Texans fan, it's time to get excited. It's going to be a good offseason. We're going to be able to recruit guys. We're going to be able to see guys in, in the <clears> combine <throat> that we're going to like. We're going to be able to see guys in free agency that we're going to be able to sign. We're going to see how this new coaching staff is going to put it all together. So let's stay tuned to what's going on with Sauce. I want to say everybody that's in the chat, that hit the like button. Shout out to y'all and shout out to all the haters because the haters do support the channel as well. Thank you. That's all I need all right. to say. Yeah, shout out to y'all. We up to 112. Oh, we up to 114. I was about to say like room 112, but we up to 114. I, I knew it was some love in the chat. Y'all just forgot. That's what it was. Y'all just forgot. Y'all was so entrenched in this great conversation. You got lost. You was distracted. It was like you was hypnotized. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? So I understand. I understand. Sometimes you just need a little reminder. We appreciate that love. Spitz, anything you want to say to the people before we get up out of here, man? Man, shout out to everybody out there on Sauce Nation. Shout out to everybody out there that checked us out on Fox 26, the app of the uh, website. Shout out to everybody out there. Um, also, y'all already know what it is. This is another day. I got to advocate. Warburger, bring back the thick and hardy. We need <laughs> Warburger to bring back the thick and hardy. We need it. We need it. We need it. Yes. You can look at I'll carry how you look wise. You already know that's the best burger of all time. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. But no, but seriously, though, everybody out there, man, it, hey, like I've been telling y'all, keep your eyes and ears open. Me and Wise got something planned. Mm. The whole mm. sauce got something playing. Me and Wise got to do the groundwork starting this weekend. But, hey, y'all, be- y'all better stay tuned. Mm. Y'all better stay tuned. Y'all, y'all, y'all keep your eyes and ears open. Y'all, y'all better. Y'all, hey, y'all already know it's the it's the Houston original roundtable. Often imitated, never duplicated. Also, I just dropped a video breaking down the exact what happened with um with the whole Lovey Smith situation. How we hired Lovey Smith and how those things transpired on my channel. Y'all go check that out. But hey. Y'all already know what it is. We dripping over here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, all I'm gonna all we gonna say is keep your schedules open. <clears throat> that's, that's all. We, all we gonna say. Yes. 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 Uh, gluten free. <laughs> see, but what footballer? What are you? T- what, I don't even know what gluten is. Man, it's time to get out. Y'all still see now. Y'all talking about health advice and all of that stuff. But man, Sauce Nation, we appreciate y'all, man. Again, like I say, man, you could be anywhere in the world right now. You could be doing anything in the world right now. But the fact that you came and chose to kick it with the round table, man, we appreciate that because time is the most valuable asset. You know, money comes back around. Money, clothes, cars, and those always come back around. You know what I'm saying? The the fact that you spent the time to chop it up with us, whether you was in the chat, you know, or wherever it may have been, um, you are greatly appreciated. We thank y'all because, again, y'all are the fresh ingredients that make the sauce because yes, we can chop it up with each other. All day. We can just sit in the Discord and talk all day. But the fact that y'all come through, y'all support, y'all like, y'all share, y'all subscribe, man, it, it's it's a great feeling to be able to have honest conversation with y'all. We thank y'all for being here. Shout out to Fox26. Again, make sure y'all, if y'all ain't got the app, get the app. Uh, if you ain't following Fox on the social media, make sure you follow him. And all our social media is up here, Sauce Sports HTX on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok, there's like nothing on the TikTok account. But I suggest you put it up because uh, it's going to be some shenanigans starting real soon. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, if you've been listening to Discord, y'all know what I've been on lately. So uh, get get with the TikToks. I'm going to take that to the next level. Trust me, y'all going to like that. And then on the Facebook, South Sports, and YouTube, South Sports, depending on wherever you're at, make sure you follow. Just go to SouthSports.com. It'll take you wherever you need to go. But with that being said. Can I give five seconds? Get what you got. Whataburger, the sauce. We need a sauce. We need a purple sauce. <laughs> we need that. 
We need a collaboration, <laughs> Waterburger. We yeah. need a collaboration. Yes, yes, yes. The the sauce special. Hey, I'm, I'm here for all the endorsements. Yes, it's, yes. It's, it's off of uh, it's off of which McCollins. It's one of them off menu items. You know what I'm saying? You gotta you gotta uh, put the, the little special message in so they know what you're talking about. But <clears throat> with that being said, man, I appreciate each and every one of y'all except for Heidi. So if you're in the Discord, if you're a member, you're a part of that, man. Slide up in the Discord. We'll be in there for a little bit after that. If you're not, we'll catch y'all on the flip side. There's going to be a lot more content coming. I apologize because uh, it's a lot of content that's been made. I just hadn't had time to edit with school and everything, but I got a lot of videos chopped up, so it's going to be dropping a lot of stuff uh, this week. So just stay tuned for that. But with that being said, we chunk it up a deuce. Y'all be cool like y'all be cool. But most of all, y'all stay saucy. And uh, we out. We're gone. Adios. Bye. Hey, one thing in the Hey, one.